In this episode, we're going to do some repotting, not just of common plants, but of some rare philodendron and alocasia, and we're going to dabble into succulents, which I generally don't like. So let's get to it. Okie dokie artichokies. We've got a lot of repotting to do, and I have been putting this off for a while now, but there's some beautiful, beautiful plants, uh, some common, others rare. Uh, like, over there in the corner, the Alocasia Quilted Dream uh, made me fall in love with Alocasia even more so over the last year. Those stunning leaves are just absolutely gorgeous, and it is a uh, fast grower. Uh, next to it, though, is the Alocasia Silver Dragon, a, a common Alocasia that you can find at like, your Home Depot, your Lowe's. It's still a beauty, a stunner, and I love its foliage as well with that striking silver. Here in front is a new plant uh, that I got, and it is another rare one. This is the Philodendron Snowdrift, uh, which, uh, gosh, probably a couple months ago, at least here in Denver, Colorado, six to eight months ago, a small plant like this was selling at the plant shops for like, oh gosh, I think $60. But now our local grocery stores are carrying them for $15. This one, though, I got for $5. Uh, I'll tell you about that a little bit more, but it has beautiful foliage. Uh, and then this baby here, my Philodendron Felix, one of my favorite, favorite plants that uh, I have been neglecting. <laughs> but take a look at those leaves. Aren't they beautiful? It needs to be repotted, though, so that's what we're going to do. But first, we're going to start with repotting the Philodendron Snowdrift here, this little beauty, because um, I got this at the grocery store, like I was saying, and the thing is about this plant is uh, the soil that it came in at the grocery store is not great, and it's super soaking wet, and this plant I got on discount because it uh, just was not doing well uh, because of the sogginess that it was left in, and so we're going to take care of it. We are going to take care of it right now by first uh, getting it out of this nasty soil. So yeah, uh, like I was saying, this is a rare philodendron, uh, a newer philodendron that's a cultivar, believed to be like a hybrid of the philodendron jungle boogie, if you remember that one. I got one of those at the beginning of the pandemic, and it was like one of my first plants, and uh, uh, it was cool, but you know, it was what it was. Yeah, so I'm glad that we took this out because yeah, this baby's roots uh, were probably starting to rot inside of there, and I don't want that to happen. So we're just going to, you can see right here, let me give you a closer look. If you see its roots, um, they're white, they're nice, but they're not huge. And so we want to make them healthier. So first things first, I need to wash this off. One second. And I'm back, and this baby has been washed off, and I'm still a little concerned about how small those roots are. The good news is they're white, they're healthy, um, but, you know, they're small, um, which is expected. I mean, if you're going to sell a rare plant for $15, $5 on discount, then whatever, I mean, right? But uh, why this was uh, so cheap is because there's this... Uh, distributor that is Tropic Treasures or Collections, and they distribute to a lot of grocery stores, the Kroger grocery stores, like here in Denver, Colorado, we have a uh, regular Kroger, and then we also have King Supers, which is the grocery store I go to near me, and uh, that's where they were selling them. Uh, but yeah, the Philodendron Snowdrift, it says the Snowdrift Philodendron is a must-have rare Philodendron. It has beautiful green and cream-colored arrow-shaped leaves with some having green speckles. <gasps> um, I will say though, Tropic Treasures, that was really cool that they're starting to like add in like rare plants because uh, at my King Super's grocery store, and I did a video on this a short time back, maybe a month and a half ago or so, but over there I have a, uh, a Monstera Thai Constellation, a little one that I got for 15 bucks from them. Now you can find them at their stores for like uh, five, and so it's really cool that they're doing those. But the one thing, even though these roots aren't impressive, uh, the one thing we do have working in our favor is the fact that it's a philodendron, and philodendron are super hardy plants, and so hopefully it'll come to. My initial thought was, I'm going to use this pot right here to repot it in. 
no, that's not a good idea. It's too large. So I just washed off also its little pot and we're going to use that as well. But what we're going to do first is you'll notice over here to the side, I have uh, two bags of soil, uh, a chunky aeroid soil mix and a succulent soil mix. The chunky aeroid soil mix, aeroid hoya, uh, is a mix of peat moss, cocoa choir nuggets, pine bark, horticultural charcoal, perlite, and worm castings, which, of course, is worm poop, you know. Uh, and the succulent mix is pumice, calcined clay, peat moss, and perlite. I get these bags over at a local plant shop here in Denver, really close to me, about a mile away, uh, called Reroot. Awesome place. And so their mixes are great. When I don't have time to mix my own, I will go to them. So I'm going to use the chunky soil mix because that stuff that Tropic Treasure sent it in is probably just good enough to get the plant to uh, the stores and probably give them a couple weeks of life. So this is a great mix because it's well draining and that's what philodendrons love. They don't like it guys, they love it. They love it. So we're gonna plop him in there and or her, I don't know. It's really beautiful though. I wasn't looking to get any new plants. I really didn't want any new plants, but I couldn't pass up like a $5 deal on a plant that I was literally, I kid you not, about eight, six, eight months ago when I saw it at our rare plant shops about to spend 60 bucks on. So I'll, I'll make an exception for this beauty, this beauty baby. Uh, and so I'm just going to put around the side like so. And I wonder in the comments below if you guys wouldn't mind telling me, uh, have any of you gotten a uh, philodendron snowdrift? If so, what has your experience been like? Uh, from everything I've read online, typical philodendron care, bright indirect light, maybe a little bit brighter but not direct sunlight. Uh, the only reason for that brightness is because it has variegated leaves. And when you have variegated leaves like this, it needs bright sunlight in order to keep that variegation or it'll revert to pure green. Look at how cute. It's still in its home, but now it has good soil. Uh, this baby will get watered in uno momento, which means in a moment. I'm learning Spanish, even though I'm Hispanic, I'm just learning it now. Uh, I'm rocking almost over 80 days on Duolingo. Woo! Yeah, that's right. All right, next up is the philodendron Felix, which is a new rare cultivar, very hard to find. I was fortunate to find it over a year ago at an Equigenera show here in Denver, uh, and it was like 40 bucks. And this baby is really expensive uh, other places. And so I fell in love with it because of its striking, beautiful uh, foliage. I mean, I have never seen a philodendron that has crazy foliage like this one here. And it's a really easy to care for philodendron. And it's a, it's a beauty. I just have not been uh, caring for it the way that I should. <laughs> and uh, the part of that is because I created this awful soil mix that had too much perlite in it. And uh, it just became too well draining. And even though philodendron like well draining, uh, if you're going to give them that well draining, they expect you to water them more. So I don't know. I wanted to move it into something healthier. And I also wanted to be able to uh, check in and monitor its root growth. And I can't do that when it's inside of a, a pot like this, even though it is a lovely pot. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to transition it into a clear pot like I do with most of my plants now. That way I can just see its root growth. And the nice thing is with a pot that's clear, you can just put it inside of any beautiful pot, maybe even this one too, and just tide it away in there so it looks nice. And uh, that way you can always see how its root growth is going. Move that baby out of the way. Move that philodendron snow drifty. And then I'm gonna put this in here so I don't make a mess even though I already have. But yeah, the philodendron Felix, um, it likes bright indirect light. Um, and I've noticed like it does love its humidity, not like you need humidity, a humid environment, but that's just kind of like how I do in my apartment with all my tropical plants. Um, but yeah, it's really one of those philodendron too that during the winter months uh, really does kind of stop growing altogether. 
I remember when I first got this plant and I saw its first new leaf unfurl and watched it, uh, recorded a time lapse, and it was so cool to see because, again, like its foliage is just so unique and different. Um, but yeah, I was really struggling with this plant at first and I lost a lot of its first leaves. And you'll notice, like right here and stuff like that, there used to be leaves one, two, three, four, four leaves down there. They died off pretty quickly, and that was my fault, my bad, and I apologize to the plant, but we're going to hopefully make up for it now, if I can get this out. Oof, yeah, it definitely needed a repotting. It's, you'll see here in a second what its roots are all jangled up, and I, I think I even, like, with this mix, put in, yeah, I put in sphagnum moss. The heck? kind of fast draining mix was I thinking like this is a succulent or something <laughs> um okay whoa I need to watch out there because its new growth point is uh about to unfurl and I wanted to do this before that happens so it would be in a good good mix okay put this baby here and I bet you honestly like because you can see right there it's new growth point that's coming in and it's literally about to just come out and unfurl. And I guarantee you the moment I repot this baby and water it and then give it its conditions back that it will um, unfurl and be a new leaf by next week. Uh, if so, I will grab a video of that and show it to you here. If not, you'll continue seeing me repotting this plant, I guess. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, these, this plant needed a repotting. I'm so sorry, baby. I did not mean to do this to you. It's just all jangled up at the bottom. But I don't need to loosen it up too much. I think what I'm going to do is just loosen up the bottom like that. I'm also going to give it, uh, I didn't like this moss bowl because it's bendable and all over the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it these moss poles here. I have two of them. And that way I can give it more structure and give it more stability. That's what I meant to say, stability, unlike my mental stability right now. Um, so we're just going to put that in there, give it a nice layering in there. And then we're going to place a oh, as I knock everything over. I'm so clumsy. Okay. And this baby can go around that side like so. Get those roots in there. Oh, perfect. I was hoping this would work out. <laughs> okay. So now that's in there, I'm going to throw this in and cover up those roots around the side. And there we go. Yeah, I definitely needed two uh, moss poles for this guy to keep in there. So I'm going to attach the second one once I get enough soil around here. There we go. And maybe that I'm covering up that area of the stem that um, where I had to cut those first leaves off. Maybe since they do have aerial roots on them, that this will help it grow and have some new growth or add to its health. Okay, so now I've got that pull apart that old protective layer there. And now we're going to put this up here, attach it, and then I'm going to tie it up with some rope and then uh, I'm going to give it a quick watering. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we are in the final stretch now. We just have these two alocasia to pot up. And we're going to start with the alocasia quilted dream a dream come true with its glossy beautiful leaves uh i'm gonna use some of this soil that i still have because i think i potted this up gosh five, four months ago into this small pot yeah four months ago we're gonna go with that guys because that sounds right i'm thinking <laughs> but yeah the alocasia quilted dream um is so beautiful and uh I love it when it shoots up these beautiful new leaves and just like 
uh, regular Alocasia, like the Silver Dragon here, or if you had Alocasia at all, you know, like, what they like. They like their soil to be consistently moist, which I have failed at with this baby. Uh, fortunately, they grow new leaves like crazy, so uh, I will... It will rebound, and I will be fine. I will be a good plant parent once again. Uh, it just needs more space, too, because it was just getting so root-bound in there, and I want to see it uh, pop out so many more new leaves. But the thing is, with the Alocasia Quilted Dream, is that, yeah, I noticed when I first got it, it was on the struggle bus because I, I don't know. I was giving it all the proper care that it needed, but still, it just was so finicky, and I think it was just kind of like acclimating to my conditions, and that took a solid, I would say, six months. <laughs> six months. I was, I was kind of surprised by that, because every other alocasia that I have uh, in my collection did not take that long at all. Uh, and I was very wary about diving into alocasia. As many of you know, like, they are just so needy when it comes to their watering their humidity and all that jazz and also they can be pest magnets and so it's a lot to take on but and i didn't like alocasia for the first three years on my plant journey but then i fell head over heels in love with them and i still am now and outside of philodendron um i would say like my next favorite uh species or family not family genus there we go genus of plants is uh well anthurium and then alocasia but anthurium and alocasia are tied and uh, what i love about alocasia is the fact that uh you will notice if you have them that their leaves um will die off rather quickly but the moment a leaf dies off like one is growing back in like immediately like it wastes no time and also um i've noticed this with alocasia very similar to anthurium is that some with some of these species of plants if you don't have um, any leaves, all of a sudden it will just start growing new ones out of nowhere, which is like impossible with other plants like philodendron, monstera. They need at least one leaf to photosynthesize to collect that energy. But uh, alocasia, nope, no sir. Uh, let me see if I have I got this silver dragon potted out enough i do really like this pot because it looks so cute in it i love white pots that's my favorite um color of pot to uh, work with when it comes to plants because it just looks so classic and especially when you have like a silver plant like this it's so beautiful because it makes the silver stand out even more you know Ooh, yep it needed a repot look at how root bound that baby is um, and if you're familiar with alocasia, as I almost dropped that, if you're familiar with alocasia, um, then you know one of the things that they produce are these things called corms. And here is a corm right here, and it kind of looks like an acorn, you know, this little thing right here. And so basically, I could just pluck that off, uh, peel back the hard edge of it, kind of like an uh, acorn is, and put it in sphagnum moss and it'll turn into a brand new plant and that's what happened actually right here and right here these corms develop and all of a sudden they just start growing new plants so yeah those two new leaves coming in were not there about two weeks ago <laughs> that's what i love about alocasia they're so unique um and the root structure is very similar to philodendron uh unlike anthurium that have those really thick roots but I have to say, out of all the alocasia that I own um, and that I have uh, studied and looked into, this one right here, the alocasia silver dragon, is without a doubt the easiest uh, alocasia that I've ever had. Um, because unlike other alocasia that are so needy with uh, their watering and all that stuff, this one is kind of like a philodendron where it's like if you forget to water it its leaves aren't going to get all crazy um and nasty the only reason why this one has some nasty leaves is just because uh it was root bound <laughs> and i knew that was the issue but how cool oh no i accidentally ripped off the corn with the new leaf coming in but that's okay because it has roots and i can pot it up into uh its own plant although i'm going to try to keep this one here so we're going to take this baby and we're going to 
put it in some new soil and use some of its old soil to mix in and it's still a good chunky soil mix you know why waste it guys why i say why uh that around i did try pond with my alocasia with one of them before and uh because they apparently like love pond my <laughs> my alocasia did not love pond and it was dying off like over a period of two months and so i said the heck with it i am literally going to uh <laughs> repot this back into chunky aeroid soil mix and out of nowhere like if that plant just started bouncing back so I haven't messed with ponds since then uh, for that reason with my Elocasia or any other plants. But yeah, pond is very effective. I just did not have the luck with it. And that's okay. No, it's not. I'm kind of upset that it didn't work, but it's okay. I'll get over it. I'll get over it. I say I will, but I won't. Um, okay. Yeah, this is going to be great because this baby definitely needed more space to grow and the thing is about like the alocasia silver dragon and the quilted dream right here is that these are big plants like they don't grow to be much larger than what they are right now but i do know that they will get a little bit bigger and that's really kind of oh no I started burying that little leaf that was coming out sorry little leaf um i know that there is still space for it to grow and uh that's what i want i want to see like how Big I can get this, even though I know it won't be much more impressive than it is now, but that's okay. Um, my Alocasia Zebrina, um, that thing has been growing like crazy after I repotted it. Like its new leaves are so beautiful, make it so big. Um, and I wish that this species of plant, the silver dragon, would get like that as well. But alas, it's okay. Not everyone becomes a big plant. That said, I do want to thank you guys for being here with me, as always, and helping me repot some of my plants and watching my silly plant videos. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. And also comment in the comments. It really helps out with the algorithm of YouTube and uh, getting these videos out there to more people like yourselves. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.